What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Jeremy Weiss here, live from Prosper Show. I'm here with the founder of Celix and Seller Locker, and there's a little bit of a debate, so we're gonna we're gonna get into it here. Sure. Um, so someone was asking me today, um, what's the best practice when creating a campaign for multiple parent-child uh, relationship listings? Should I be creating each with each project product? Should they be its own um, campaign, or should I be grouping them together all into one campaign and bringing traffic? to you know one item hoping that they buy other items yeah I mean this is a very very common question essentially uh, so I think that from a you know from a theoretical point of view so the academic answer essentially would be to always have one ASIN so one child ASIN um, in one campaign right that's the best way to do it because then you can have a very granular strategy and have very you know, different keywords and different bids for each uh, variation um, the truth is then that in practice if you do have a lot of SKUs then you end up having, you know, you have a thousand SKUs, you end up having 3,000 campaigns, and it just gets very hard to, to handle, right? So the, the rule of thumb that I give in general is that if it's, if it's to a top-selling product, then it makes sense to split it on various campaigns. If it's just, a, you know, an average-selling product, even a, like a not-so-well-selling product, um, then I would just start to, to group them together, right? So as long as, and that's important, as long as they are, uh, you know, people use the same keywords to find the products. So if there was a negative keyword, I would not group them together. If, if, the, if people are only looking for large and this is a small one combined with a large one, you wouldn't group them together. Yes, absolutely. So this is important. So people need to, need to use the same keywords <laughs> to, to actually um, to, to find them. And so, because that's exactly the point, right? And so the question in this specific case is, is the size really something that people are looking for in their keywords? Is that what women say? Or so, oh no, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> My English is not good enough to understand this joke. <laughs> Any follow-up question on that as far as? So really it comes down to managing it. If you had a good way to manage it, typically you should have a campaign for every single product and probably more than one campaign, broad, phase, and exact. Yes, but in practicality, you should group things together just to help yourself manage these campaigns. So, I mean, I think that, you know, we at Celix, but probably also other tools are working on uh, like an automation that will essentially, you know, at some point allow you to have for 10,000 SKUs, 100,000 different campaigns, right? Um, but I think that if you want to keep it reasonable in terms of the time that you're investing, then you should really, um, you know, 80, 20. Always try, not try to get the, the most of it, try to get like the reasonable amount out of it for a very limited investment. Okay. So I want to hear about what Seller Locker does and I want to hear about what you spoke about. Yeah. Let's talk about Seller Locker. Um, so Seller Locker, I'm sure you've heard of many, you know, reimbursement softwares. We built the first um, reimbursement software that puts the power back in the hands of the seller. And we did this to comply with Amazon's TOS. So basically, we're not spreading you know, hundreds of cases. You see the cases through a Chrome extension. You click open case, and that case would open up on your behalf. Yesterday, um, I believe Ray Berman was talking about pick and pack fees. How could you manage pick and pack fees for every single order that comes in? You know, I, I'm not looking at every order and making sure my fee is 359 instead of 492. Right. But Amazon's making mistakes, and understandably so, they're making mistakes. My software tracks every single order that comes in, and within one click, we'll open up a case to get you the funds back. But you're also increasing your profits. If you're making sure Amazon's charging you the correct amount, then at the end of the month, you can be getting the right amount of money into your account. We also do go back 18 months, so that could be, you know, a huge sum of money. Um, and our customers are really happy. We actually had someone yesterday that um, signed up and he checked his account today and we estimated 40 grand in reimbursements wow. and after that is pick and pack fees so you know our customers are really happy and um, we're hoping to do some real business here so why did you start the company 
I started it for two reasons. My partner got a message from a uh, from Amazon saying, you know, stop automating your cases. So we wanted to find a way to make it manual, but without all the legwork. And I created for the pick and pack fees. Amazon was charging me four dollars extra per unit on an air condition, and I just couldn't keep up. Every day there was another SKU that had a mistake. So I created it to automate it for myself, and to really, once I saw that it's working for myself, we, we went live with it and we went public. Cool. Sellerlocker.com, check it out. To Sellex, so what did you speak about? So yesterday I was uh, speaking about uh, essentially sponsored products and, and uh, paid marketing in general. Um, and it was a very data-driven, very data-heaven presentation. Uh, so I was sharing a lot of insights. So essentially uh, we were asking a few of our customers whether we could, you know, analyze their data on a, on a bigger scale. And so we're analyzing a few thousand campaigns and trying to identify what's the difference between a profitable campaign and an unprofitable campaign right. to derive best practices. So and what are some of the findings? So the first finding, and we were quite shocked uh, to see this, is that 57% 57, uh, 57 of all pro campaigns were actually losing money if you are take into consideration all costs or also prior costs, which is, you know, I mean, it's, it's crazy. 57% are losing money. Yeah. Um, so that was the first, the first kind of shocking revelation. And then the, the, I think the key insight was that um, you really have a, a very small number of high volume keywords that are driving your revenues, yeah. but then you have uh, uh, the long tail keywords that are getting clicks but no sales that are eventually determining the overall profitability. And those are the keywords that most people, they don't look at. So they just say, oh, this keyword just got one click and this one just got two clicks, so we're just gonna you know, let it run. Yeah. But essentially, you, know, you have hundreds of them. And so in our study, it was, um, I think it was 86% of all keywords were actually keywords that were generating clicks but no sales, right? Yeah. And they were just, you know, you let them run and run and run. And uh, so the, one of the key insights really is that, you know, those are really crucial for your overall campaign profitability. And if you want to have a profitable campaign, you need to make sure to stop those as quickly yeah. as possible. Yeah, it's like death by just small little increments. It's like, you know, I give you a thousand little cuts, right? Eventually right. you'll bleed uh, you'll bleed out, right? At yeah. some point. So that's So my question is on the front end, obviously the fifty seven percent are not profitable. On the front end, the question is that is that um, driving sales velocity so that it may be profitable eventually. See, and uh, I, I totally understand this. This is the, the typical argument that most sellers have. They say, you know what, I don't need to be profitable because it's going to boost my organic rankings and then in the long run I'm going to be profitable. I have a yeah, kind it's of a, a concern. That's why I asked, yeah. Well, it is, you know, I think so. What's, what's sure is that it has a positive impact on the organic ranking. What's not sure at all is how big this impact is and how much it's really worth to you. So, And this is a big problem because essentially everyone thinks that it's going to have, or everyone knows it's having a positive impact, but nobody can quantify Not it. Much, yeah. And so the problem is that everyone is just bidding like crazy, hoping essentially that in the long term it's going to pay off, right? And so, you know, I mean, we have a lot of customers in the US, a lot of customers in Europe. I can tell you from, from a European point of view, the US market for sponsored products is, I mean, I don't want to say dead, but it's super, super expensive. And it's just uh, because everyone is following this argument that you know what, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. And I, I personally feel that sponsor products is probably the best performance marketing channel you can have in the, in the entire world. Yeah. And with that argument of having, hey, it has a positive impact, but I know how big it is, you turn a performance marketing channel into a branding channel where you yeah. cannot really quantify the performance, right? Will there be something that will help quantify that? You know, on the front end, it's 57% you're losing, but then tracking over time, is there anything people can do to start to track that? On, on the back end or the sales velocity. Yeah, I mean this is you know I mean, I mean this is something that we're working on very heavily to try to quantify this halo effect, right? Um, but the truth is that even from an automated base, it's just it's just very uh, complicated. I mean, what you can do is the following: you can track the the kind of the impact it has on organic rankings, right? Yeah, right? So you can track your keyword rankings and you can track your, your PPC sales and you can kind of see, you know, where, where are correlations. Mm -hmm. So you can see, you know, it brought you from page three to page one. But then the next question is how much is it worth, right? How much is it worth to you to be on page one for this keywords compared to page three? Yeah. How much can you lose to get there? And also probably part of it is if you, uh, they're doing the uh, sponsored ads, they have to take some of those and put them into the, in the optimization, right? So that's exactly the question, right? So how much how much is it really worth to you, right? 
and people are looking at their conversion rates when creating these campaigns. Like for me as a seller also, I'll only campaign hard on products that I know I'm above 30% on a conversion rate. So I know this, it's going to take me about three clicks to get the, to get the customer because if it's going to take me 10 clicks, no matter if I'm on the first page, second page, I'm never converting that customer. It's not worth campaigning for it. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I think it, it really depends on the on on the category. So first of all, I don't think that a lot of sellers are following the strategy. I think a lot of sellers are just saying, "Hey, you know what? I'm just going to run ads to rank high, uh, no matter the conversion rate." I mean, you saw the stats yesterday. Um, so we also looked at conversion rates, you know, benchmarks, and we found that I don't know how much, what, what was it like 30 percent or so have a conversion rate of below five percent. Um, which is far away from your 30% that you just mentioned, right? Uh, so obviously people are running ads also for products that are not converting so well. Um, and so, yeah, I lost my thought there. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what I wanted to say. But so, yes, I think that... The question was about the clicks. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, so I, I think that a lot of sellers are not doing this uh, properly. Um, and uh, I think that the conversion rate is one of, so I think the conversion rate click-through rate is the, the most underrated metrics when it comes to the sponsored products. Yeah. Selex, Seller Locker, thanks for the intense conversation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same.